here I was uh, thinking that future-proofing your code just means not creating any technical debt. That would have been so much easier. So time for our next speaker. Please join me on stage. Brian Davis from Red Canary. Canary. All right, everyone having fun so far? Is everyone okay to? Yeah, that's a nice pun. All right, so I'm gonna talk about CADA today, uh, which is the Kubernetes event-driven autoscaler. I don't have time to get into what it is, but you'll see what you shouldn't do with it. So if this is where you are in your journey of implementing CADA and then trying to figure out profit, I'm gonna talk about this middle part right here. So there's really five phases of adopting CADA within your organization. <clears throat> the first is accepting that you need a new autoscaler, right? The second is you gotta figure out how to say the name. I call it CADA because I saw a video on YouTube and someone called it CADA. There's a lot of debates. We spent more time on bullet number two than by phone or admit. The third is to implement it. The fourth is what I call the trough of despair, and then the fifth obviously is profit. I'm gonna talk about the trough of despair today. So our old auto-scaling mechanism, this is a graph, an artist's representation of a graph, that shows the messages we had coming into our components over time, and our auto-scaling. So the red is the number of pods we have. And so the problem we had is we scale really, really slow. And we wanted to save more money by contracting our cluster at the end of the day. And there was this great quote that I found online that says, one of the coolest features of CADA is its ability to scale your application back to zero when there are no events to process. This can lead to significant cost savings. That's exactly what we wanted. That's really, really cool. So we implemented CADA, and it was great. We did exactly what that quote said. We could scale up fast. We could scale down fast when there was no events to process. We had zero pods. Everything was going great. But remember that trough of despair that I talked about? So the problem was that this is what our messages look like at like 3 in the morning. Now you don't normally have a pile of messages in our system coming in at 3 in the morning, and so our engineer got page. That's not actually a picture of the engineer, but we don't need to talk about that. So you look and say, well, why is the engineer page? Why did all those messages get piled up? Well, there's a big clue right here when we had no pods. And this was an interesting discovery to us because we had a new auto scale. Why wouldn't we have pods? Well, so I had a little amendment to this quote that I needed to make, right? So I said before you can scale to zero when you have no messages, there's an addendum, or if the Kate's metric server gets evicted from your cluster. <laughs> now, I'm sure this was in the documentation, but there's like three lines of YAML that we implemented in order to solve this problem, but that was a really, really interesting discovery at three in the morning. So once we moved on from that, we had some more exciting problems. So this was our old scaling patterns. It looks like pyramids. And all of our plots, you can see we'd scale up, we'd scale down like pyramids. The new one kind of looked like skyscrapers, a city skyline, right? So the problem was, and you can see on the graph on the left-hand side, we would move like 10 pods at a time, two pods, depending on the deployment that we had. Well, now that we can scale with just reckless abandon, we can add like 2,000 pods immediately which is really, really cool, but you're at a Kubernetes conference, and you're probably familiar with some other problems that that can create. So the problem is our system, which was pretty darn mature at this point, and we've rung out a lot of scalability problems, we hadn't rung these out before. So what happened was, by scaling up immediately like this, we started running into all sorts of rate limits that we had never seen before. So we ran into S3 rate limits that we had never encountered. We ran into STS rate limits running in AWS. So the, the challenge was that because we scaled so slow before, we were masking a lot of latent defects that we had in our code we had no idea about. So all of this was really, really exciting in terms of to turn that. And then we started to climb out of the trough of despair. And so now we started to tune it, which is really the fun part of doing all this. So if you look at this plot, you can see that our messages were kind of coming and going. And the problem was our pod count had dropped to zero. Now our application was running in JRuby, which that's a whole other conversation, but it's not the most efficient thing to start and stop. So every time the message count got cleared out, we would scale down to zero, and then some messages would obviously pile back up, we'd scale back up. We'd waste a lot of time starting up pods to, do, to basically start and, start and code over and over again. So what we learned was that we had to go be a little bit less eager in the way that we processed our messages. And so what we did is, if you look at this message pattern, we never quite dropped to zero, and then the, the pod count never drops to zero either. So what I did is we, we called this, we, we determined we should make our messages smooth out a little bit more. And so we call this the nightclub theory. So no one wants to go to a nightclub when there's no one out the back door. So instead, you have to have that line out the door all the time because then people see how cool that nightclub is and people want to go to your pod and do processing. It's not the greatest metaphor, but it's fun. It's fun to tell people about the nightclub theory and they go, what are you talking about? 
So anyway, the long story short of the takeaway from this is that CADA really is awesome. But if you're going to go and implement it in your organization, you should be prepared for some unexpected surprises along the way. I obviously didn't have time to dig into all these, but feel free to hit me up. My contact information is here. You guys can find me afterwards. Thank you, guys. Enjoy the rest of your conference.